this is Christmas Day. Praise God. You know, actually, um, there are more and more churches that are meeting on Christmas Day. Isn't that neat? So I was very surprised and very excited to hear a lot of the other churches were, were doing uh, uh, something on Christmas Day today. Now, next Sunday is the first day of the year, so don't forget that one. Because that'll be the time that we dedicate the entire year to the Lord. Give us, uh, we'll, we're going to give Him the first day of the year. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? That's going to be amazing. Let's thank the Lord for a moment and uh, let's come into His presence, can we? Father, in Jesus' name. <clears throat> we come into Your presence, Lord, with thanksgiving, with joy. What an incredible privilege it is, Father, to worship the one who came to earth and to do so on this day, on Christmas Day. Father, we pray for a supernatural blessing upon each and every person who knows you. Pour out your spirit upon this planet, Father. Let your name be glorified, Lord, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. So today, Father, we honor you. We say happy birthday. What a great day. We pray, Father, for those watching online, that they too would be touched just as we are. We commit this to you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we just give God a clap offering in this place? Oh, come on. I believe you can do better than that. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to worship? Y'all ready to worship? Here we go. Come on. Just clap your hands just like this. Here we go. Hey.
understanding that he is the God that fights your battles, that we are victorious in Jesus. Amen, church? Amen, Lord. We welcome your presence into this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to have its way, Lord, in this place. Not only in the sanctuary, Lord, but most of all in our hearts, that you would have your way and that you would speak to each and every one of us this morning, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this time that we have with you. We dedicate all that we say, all that we sing to you this morning. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, it's not just a day, a holiday, but every single day we celebrate Jesus. Amen? So, Lord, this morning we stand in your presence, Lord, and we thank you for this opportunity. What a privilege and an honor it is to step into your presence this morning and know that you are here. We worship you and we praise you. Just allow his spirit to speak to you this morning and worship him and thank him because he is here. Welcome to this place, Lord.
go ahead and open up your mouth this morning and give God praise in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this place. You are welcome into our hearts this morning, Lord. That you would speak to us, Lord, and that you would have your way in this place. You are worthy of it all. All that we have, all that we are, all that we yes, say, all that we sing, Lord, we give to you this morning. Our hearts are full of thanksgiving and praise for your son, Jesus Christ. Spirit, thank you for your presence that is here. We acknowledge you in this place, Lord.
exalt you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift your name on high, Jesus. of the priests still stained with blood they knew exactly where to go they weren't searching Bethlehem because the Lord was born in the place where sheep lambs were destined for sacrifice in the temple in Jerusalem what a picture here was the Lamb of God. Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of sheep and lambs and goats had been sacrificed to foreshadow stands before an open door of salvation deciding whether or not to come in. No one is forced. No one is pushed. We're all given that free choice. Aren't you glad you stepped through that door? Yes. Don't you pray that your family would? All your family, your extended family, those who may be kind of against you meeting on at church on Christmas Day because your kids are going to grow up all weird because of it. Come on, you know what I mean. You're going to church? It's Christmas. When I want an in and out, I go to in and out. we're here and thank you for coming first of all um, it's really not a sacrifice the world says it is but it's not the real sacrifice is that he came to earth and then was destined for the cross for you and I that's the sacrifice and that's something that far surpasses any sacrifice that I may make
course you deserve. One more time, let the church sing. You are worthy. Go ahead, let him hear your praise from heaven. You are. I mean that in a positive sense. we commit Pastor OJ into your hands. We stand here and lay hands on him, recognizing the call of God and affirming that call by the laying on of hands. I pray, Father God, for your direction and for your enablement, empowerment, and that you would truly bring many into the kingdom through my brother. Father, I thank you for his gifting. I thank you for his personality. And so, Father, I pray, keep him safe. Protect him.
Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jack and Pastor Jane. And um, thank you for everyone. Um, this is the easiest job ever. <laughs> but um, people ask me, Were you, did you always want to be a pastor? I said, heck no. Um, but somebody asked me, how is it being a pastor? And from the bottom of my heart, I said, it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I say that because we get to lead people to Jesus. We get to empower them. We get to remind people how much they're loved in their mess. And I tell people, God called me in my mess. Ghetto, loud, crazy as heck. He called me just like this. And he loves me. And for me to be in position to remind people of that love, best decision I've ever made in my life. So thank you guys. Thank you for this prayer. I think it, it, it hasn't hit me yet until this moment right now that pastor prayed for me. I didn't, I didn't plan to come today either. We didn't have church. We had church yesterday. But Holy Spirit woke me up this morning and said, get your butt to church. It is going to be 11 years until Christmas lands on a Sunday. Get your butt to church. So um, thank you, Holy Spirit, and thank you, CLC family. I'm not going to be gone forever. I'm going to be coming to help you guys with worship um, throughout the year, too. <laughs> so, in Jesus' name, amen. Turn to Luke chapter 4 for a moment. <clears throat> In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, <clears throat> the angel came to Joseph and said, Emmanuel, God with us. This morning as I was driving to church, there were so many people who seem to be ignorant of, of the fact that God intersected mankind at his worst. Intersected mankind. 
backtrack for a moment. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The fall of mankind, Adam had, had sinned, and God had brought them to account. And we see the first messianic prophecy of her seed, capital S, destroying his seed. That you would bite his heel, but he would crush your head. And so ever since that prophetic word, ever since that word in the Garden of Eden, Satan has been trying to destroy the lineage of Jesus. He came very close several times. But all of a sudden, after 400 years of silence, there he was. But the fight wasn't over yet. Between the birth and, and the second year, Herod butchered all the kids, two years under, all the boys, two years old and under, hoping to murder the Christ child. They escaped. When Herod died, they came back and went on to Nazareth. And then, just before the cross, just before the cross, so Satan could not destroy Christ, the lineage of Christ, but just before the cross, he prayed, Father, if it's your will, remove this from me, the burden of the cross. Yet, nevertheless, your will be done. He sweat drops of blood because of the pressure of the sin of mankind. I think his prayer meant, don't let me fall short of the cross. We've come this far. Let me go all the way to the cross and become the sin sacrifice for mankind. And I can't, there's no way for us to fathom and imagine as he hung on the cross in absolute agony. He lifted himself up and he said, it is finished. It's done. Ha. And he gave up the spirit. At the same time, the three inch thick curtain in the temple that kept people from going into the Holy of Holies, his presence, was torn from top to bottom. not from bottom to top, nor was it a curtain that could simply be moved aside. God said, the entrance into my presence is now for everyone. Wow. I see this. God's people sometimes starving to death with an abundance of food within their reach. And not feeling worthy. None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy. Billy Graham wasn't worthy. Mother Teresa wasn't worthy. None of us are worthy. David wasn't worthy. John the Baptist wasn't worthy. None of us are worthy. And yet there it is. There it is. 
In Luke chapter 4, <clears throat> Jesus had just been tested and tempted by the, by the enemy in, in the wilderness, and he had come through three dramatic testings. Verse uh, 14, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread throughout, through the whole countryside. He taught the synagogues. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom, and he stood up to read. The scroll, was, uh, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, and he quotes Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Say that, good news. Good news. Christianity is not bad news. Man's interpretation of Christianity is bad news, but not the good news itself. His news is good news. He has to preach good news to the poor, and that's not just the homeless and all of that. That, that word poor is actually incapable of <clears throat> attaining it yourself. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Those, that word prisoners is actually people taken in wartime, captives, and the recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is the year of the Lord's favor. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what's happening in the church. It doesn't matter what's, what's going on in my life. This is the year of the Lord's favor. God's favor shines upon us today. Yeah, but you don't know what I've done. I don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, it does. But what you and I have done doesn't affect his, his mercy and His goodness. It only amplifies it. I mean, this is Christmas. <laughs> and we're used to Christmas as a time where we just go nuts with our presents and everything. I just received a photograph from Travis and Andrea, and you can't even see the carpet because of the paper. <clears throat> yeah. And the title, they had fun, I bet. Isn't it fun to receive all that stuff? I didn't give Travis anything, my, my son-in-law. I didn't give him anything. <clears throat> You go, well, really? No, no, he doesn't need anything. He has me. <laughs> he has my daughter. He's got my daughter. We raised her. It cost us $100,000 to raise her. He's got my daughter. But I thought I'd be nice to him and say, you know what, we're going to pay for your ticket to India. Let me know that he's, he's happy. Right? So his way is paid. We're, 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 we're taking a trip to India, Dharamsala, India, on February 13th. You could pray. <clears throat> so what does this mean? What does this mean? Um, first of all, in your, in your handout real quick, and I, I, I will uh, cut this a little short because I'm hungry. Oh, I'm sorry. No that's, no, that's not it. That's not it. But Christmas is all about a miraculous time in history. It is a, it is a historical fact. I'm going through <clears throat> the great courses on the history of the Bible, and it's actually taking seven different people's opinions of the Bible beginning with a creation story and these seven people are not all Christians just one is so the first one is an atheist the second one is a Muslim uh, third one is a is a, a feminist the fourth one is a 
is a Christian lawyer, and it is so interesting to hear their insane opinions on something that actually happened. Do you know that they hate the Ten Commandments? The atheistic world hates the Ten Commandments. Why? So it's okay to kill? It's okay to do all these things that the commandments... And so their reasoning is that anything that binds, anything that, that uh, prohibits a human being from, from its, its true expression is evil. So how do, you, how do you bring the truth of God, the freedom of God to a, to a world who has set its sights against this open door? And it's telling people that this open door to heaven, this blessing, is evil. That this door will lead you to, to uh, death, to whatever. It's incredible. Ray Comfort has a, a, a very good video <clears throat> on uh, God versus evolution. All of these things. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, if, if, if you can't see this truth, then you do not understand what I'm going to be saying in a minute. But you can understand this truth because your heart has been opened and you have accepted the Word of God. So this miraculous time and season is a time when Old Testament prophecies were fulfilled. Over 300 were, were fulfilled in his own lifetime. Unbelievable. It's impossible for 300 prophecies to be fulfilled in one lifetime. It is impossible, and yet they were. <clears throat> Not only were these prophecies fulfilled, but they were fulfilled through ordinary people. Not through saints. In fact, the first, uh, 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 the, the first one was actually uh, a priest by the name of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. And when the angel appeared to him, he said, how can I be sure? And the angel said, it's very simple. You're not going to be able to talk until John is born. You believe now? Mm -hmm. The second one is Mary. Very normal, ordinary people. Mary was not a saint. She was, not, she was so ordinary. I, she was young and ordinary. And the angel appears to her, and he says, Mary, highly favored of God, God is going to overshadow you, and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And she said, let it be to me according to your word. Two very different responses. One said, how can I be sure? And that's where a lot of the church is. Do you believe in miracles? Well, yeah, because nothing's going wrong at the moment. <laughs> but how about when everything is falling apart, do you believe in miracles? Well, how can I be sure? Versus, let it be done to me according to your will. Hmm. So they were Old Testament prophecies fulfilled through ordinary people in a challenging socio-political arena like today. How many are, are chronologically older than others? What does that mean? You know what I mean. You know when you get old. All of a sudden, you cross that threshold going, ah, no one told me about this. And because we are somewhat advanced in age more than others, our perspective is a little different. 
Everybody today, the last few years, you know, it's the end of the earth. Well, how many were here at the Cuban crisis? That was almost the end of the world, for real. There have been bad times throughout history. Mao Zedong, the one that they honor in China, has systematically been involved in personally and through his orders of the murder of, of 75 million people, 10 times more than Hitler. There have been violent times, horrible times. We went to Cambodia for the first time because I wanted to put my feet on the killing fields and pray. And we ended up serving for how many trips, Joe? I don't know, 12? Six? With a, with a, you know, orphan homes and rice mill. It was amazing. But it all started because of, of this one man's attempt to eradicate and, and, and kill off a third of his own nation. I wanted to put my feet there. So this, this society today is absolutely no challenge to God. It doesn't matter who is in office. I mean, it's nice if we have people who are sympathetic to, to God's uh, agenda. They want to help bring about good. That's good. But when Paul told Timothy to pray for for leaders, do you know that who, who was on the throne in his culture? Nero. Nero did some serious damage to the church. And he said, pray for him. Pray for our leaders. And so Christmas was prophecy fulfilled through ordinary people in the midst of a challenging society. And it worked. So what did he come? Why did he come? I think it's all fulfilled and, and summed up, I mean, in the, in the passage we, we just read in Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, Jesus, because he, the Father, has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. So the first thing we, we have in this open door is we have what we need physically, spiritually, and emotionally. He is the answer to all three of those needs. Matthew 6 says that he will provide all things for us if we follow him emotionally he said I would be filled with hope Romans 15 3 I would be filled with hope through the power of the Holy Spirit spiritually born again going to heaven all three of my areas in life are taken care of all three We live in such an abundant culture, don't we? You know, in India, people are starving as these cows are walking by them. But they're not allowed to kill the cows and have some good old steak because they're holy cows. Doesn't make sense. You know, when no one's looking, take one for your family, butcher it and have some steak. Come on. But that's not what they believe. So here they are with food on hoof, walking by them as they are starving. That's the picture of the church. You have everything you need. The Bible says in Colossians that we are complete in Him. We are complete. You say, well, I don't have enough 
gifts for, for our kids. You know, I, I know it, it's, it's difficult, but you're complete. One of my Christmases in Holland, I was a kid, I only got one little gift. And I still remember that Christmas. That thing was like dysfunctional, man. <sighs> That's all I got. And today, I don't, it, it really is better to give than to receive. I mean, it really is. It's not just a, it's better to give than to receive. No, it really is. Does anybody agree? It's better to give than to receive. It feels better. Because when you receive something, you're all excited, and then, you know, five minutes later, it's broken. But when you give, it, it lasts. And the more you give, the better it feels. When we're in Tibet, we give no strings attached, solar lights to people who have no lights. They take these things and they're like, wow. No, as long as there's sun, there's light. We were in one place where <clears throat> we came back. It was the, the glacier area, and they, they recognized our car, and they stopped us, and they were all excited to see us. But before we, we left, we went to a Jiansi, and then we came back. Before we left... The Lord said, uh, ask your guide to pick people who really need something. And so we came, she, she came with a, a group of maybe 15 or so people. And I said, stand in a circle around me. And I gave them a $100 bill. I mean, you, you go, what? Wow. No, 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 no. A Chinese $100 bill. That's only worth $16 or so. They thought that they had become wealthy. They were blown away. They were blown away. They were blown away. That here, somebody they didn't know would literally give them something. We were in Beijing, and here was an old man in a wheelchair. Do you remember that, Joe? In a wheelchair. The Holy Spirit said, give him $100. When I say $100, it's 100 Chinese dollars. <clears throat> now, Chinese people won't let you give them money like that. You, know, you, you can't tip. You can't do anything like that. You have to sneak money into their lives in some way if you want to help them. And so, I, not knowing Chinese, I walked up to him, and, and he's, he's in his wheelchair. And I tapped him on the shoulder, and he looked up, and he grinned. And I gave him, you're supposed to hand things like this. I gave him this $100 bill. <laughs> what was going on in his brain? I'm sure he still talks about that. You hear this man from, I think, America gave me something that for nothing just gave it to me. His grandsons probably know about it. And they're saying, well, I want to meet this American. But that's not the point. The point is that here was this individual nameless individual who just out of the goodness of his heart gave me something and wanted nothing back in return and sent me off. It is better to give than to receive. Far better. It doesn't even compare. And we're poor but we were made rich 
in him. And so we have become a conduit of his blessing. We are not a reservoir to collect his blessing. We're a conduit to flow his blessing through us to others. Jane and I bought our grandkids a one gift for all of them. And it was a trampoline. And this morning, Andrew showed us the video. They were just like laying on the boxes. Thank you, thank you. you know? <laughs> we want to get them away from, from their uh, devices. Right? Outside, jumping. Exercise. It even has a basketball hoop inside and a slide outside. It's pretty cool. You know, now when you buy a trampoline, it, it comes with insurance and lawyer's fees and all that stuff, you know? Right? Andrew said, Dad, do you remember the trampoline you bought us when we were kids? I said, yeah, it was just below the deck and there was, there was no grass. It was all... <clears throat> it was all... Uh, Volcanic rock. You know what volcanic rock is? Very sharp. And, and, and the springs weren't even covered. And we stood on the deck and jumped. And we would fall off onto the... And today... But I'm glad it's all covered. I mean, you should see it. It's got walls, right? And they bow out a little bit. So if you do miss, you know, you can bounce back in. It's amazing. But it's better to give than to receive. It's better to give than to receive. And I don't know if I have any other point in this whole thing. But for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And that's the cosmos. That's everybody. It doesn't say, for God so loved the church. It doesn't say, for God so loved Christian people. It says, for God so loved the church that he gave us one of the angels. No. For God so loved the church that he gave his only son. That whoever, whoever believes, you don't have to get ready to believe, you just believe. You do not have to go to catechism or whatever that's called. You don't have to go to Bible college. You don't have to, you don't have to know the Bible. You don't have to know anything. You come when you believe, you step into this door. It's as simple as that. There are no restrictions, there are no demands, there is nothing. Only believe. Only believe. Do you want to be a Buddhist? You have to memorize. Wake up at three, sit there with your book, you know, eat nothing until noon, a little bowl of rice, go back to this, Forget it. You want to, you know, first of all, I, I, I was listening to a comedian, uh, Christian comedian, and he said, any religion that lets you eat pork is awesome. <laughs> he was a Christian. But ours, we... No, there's a lot of religions that, where you can't eat pork. <laughs> but we have so much we have so much it's unbelievable how much we have it's free it's for everyone and it's never ending why wouldn't you want something like that you know sushi okay if they came to me and said here's a card you can come in any time as many times as, as, as you want during the day, and eat everything you want 
forever until you die. You think? I would first of all say this is, this is a dream. This isn't true. There's, the, there's something attached to this. No, 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 it's free. It's free. Here's your, you know, there's your card. You can come in any time. Any day we're open. You can stay as long as you want. You can eat whatever you want. You can treat others to this through your card. Do you want this card? I think I would say a yes. Right? Now, if you don't like sushi, that's, that's not a bargain. So that's just my world, okay? That's just me. With Gabe, it would be the Korean barbecue, right? What? <laughs> but that's what Jesus did. He said, this day, when he, re when he read that, he said, this day, this prophecy is fulfilled in your ears. And that's, that's not this day, that's that day for us. So if it was fulfilled that day, it's fulfilled this day. He came to set us free. He came to give us what we needed. Are you struggling with bondages in your life? There's a way out. There's a way out. Whatever you need, you are complete in Christ. So if I'm bummed out, if I'm mad, if I'm depressed, if I'm angry, if I'm depressed, if I'm angry, if I'm angry, and if I'm angry, I can go to Jesus. And not just from a distance, God, I'm angry. No, I have to go into his presence. I've got to go through that door. I have to sit at his feet and let him soak me and replace and displace the anger for his presence, for his spirit. How, how long does that take? I come into his presence. Lord, I'm really ticked off. But I love you. Instantly. Now, if I keep rehearsing it in my brain as I'm asking for him, no. But if I come and let him saturate me, he will displace, picture this, it's a big glass um, jar or something with mud in the bottom, like the, the black silky mud, you know, blech, right? You stick a hose into it. That's the Holy Spirit, or that's the Word of God. But you have to turn it on, and that's the Holy Spirit, and it will begin to rush into this jar. And before you know it, it has displaced the black mud with clear water. Are you afraid? Stick that thing into, into the murkiness of, of those feelings and turn on the Holy Spirit. Let him do it. And he will literally displace whatever it is that you are struggling with. The Lord said, now I'll close, the Lord said, Jack, I don't ever want you to preach where you are not. Because there's a lot of preachers who preach beyond their, their own lives and their own experience, a lot of them. A lot of preachers preach past where they are. But I want to tell you, I have experienced what I just told you. And I experience it on a daily 
daily basis. Daily basis. When Jane had her cancer, I had to stick that hose into the jar that was black with fear and uncertainty, and it displaced it. I was more afraid than she was. When I had the heart attack, it took me a while to get over that. Notice where I'm preaching from. No devil's going to stop me. He may trip me. Just recently, I went through a little season where I thought, what are these buzzards flying overhead? Have you ever seen buzzards <clears throat> just circling? You know what they're doing? They're making sure that the, that the animal is dead before they swoop in. <clears throat> and spiritually, I was feeling these buzzards circling around. I'm just opening my heart. Buzzards flying around. And I thought, what is going on? Because the enemy was, is so angry that I didn't give in a year ago and just say, well, my days are, are over. It's over. Get another pastor. That would have been the easy way out, right? Ha. I never choose the easy way out. So I said, devil, fight's on. So then I said, okay, we're going to go to India. We're going to give the Dalai Lama a Bible. You want to stop me? I'm going to pull out the plugs. Because <laughs> we're not, we're not stoppable. We're unstoppable. Only if you are deciding that you are unstoppable. If you decide you're stoppable, you are. How are you feeling? Good. I was asked, are you going to preach until you die? I said, probably. Is there a problem with that? Now, if I was a plumber, I'd have to quit because I wouldn't be able to bend down under those. I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you do it. Or construction. I don't know how you do it. It's just, there, there's a time when you go, my body. <sighs> but as long as I can walk and talk, be unstoppable. Let me summarize for a moment. He came to set the captives free. He's freed you, so therefore go free others. He came to satisfy the poor. He satisfied you with an open-ended sushi card. Go, go treat other people. <clears throat> Do it beyond yourself. Do it beyond your family. Your family's already taken care of because you're hovering over, and, and I don't mean in a bad way, but, you know, your protection is there. So go beyond your family. That's it. I'm sorry. That's the end. Oh, my brain went blank. But let's stand for a moment, all right? Let's stand and let's thank the Lord. And if you've been watching us online, I hope you've been encouraged. Uh, the, this is just amazing, church. Listen, for, to see you here on Christmas Day, you're awesome. You're awesome. Right? Goldridge, right? Yeah. Right, Anthony? Hey. That means you are making a statement, not just to the world, not to us, not to others, not to your family. You're, what's happened is you've, you've made a statement in the spirit. You've, de you've declared something in the spirit that says, I give 
to Jesus my best. Amen? I want you to come next week because we are going to dedicate the year to the Lord. As the first Sunday, the first day, actually, the first day of 2023. Folks, I graduated in 1965 from high school. We thought the year 2000 was, you know, we'd all be flying around in these little things. Yeah. Anti-gravity cars, you know, the Jetsons. Twenty-three, twenty, Let me tell you what I think is going to happen. This, this is going to be a year for some people that will be like no other year. Because this is what I see with some people. They're bound up like a spring. It's like tight. Right? And just they're tight. And God is going to bring a release. He's not going to do it like this. Like a jack in the box. That'll freak everybody out. But he's going to go. He's going to enlarge your tent stakes. Spiritually, spiritually. He's going to embrace you in a greater degree. He's going to give you visions, dreams, and revelations of what he's going to do. And here's the caveat. You join him in what he's going to do. And you will find purpose for your life. It's going to be a great year. Finances. Listen. Finances. I'm not just saying this, but it's already happened with me, with us. And, uh, the finances for, for this trip, for other things, are just like, wow, stop. I've already experienced in the last short bit is miraculous healing and abundant provision. So God says, that's just a forum, that's just a preview, Jack, of what's to come. Here's what you need to do. God will not not push you into this door. But like I'm holding this tissue. Just like I'm holding this tissue. And he won't, he won't drop it as though. But like I'm holding this tissue. When he has to what? Reach out and take it. It's already here. So you reach out this year. Are you bummed? Are you mad? Are you going through problems? Step in. Step in. Get soaked. Be filled with His presence. Gosh, I could prophesy, but... see things far beyond what you're able and capable of doing. And that might frustrate you to some degree, but God has, has given you the ability to see through the clutter of our society to begin to pray for His will in a greater degree. Some of it you're going to be able to do, others, no. But, you're, but God has gifted you with the ability to see through now, others are not going to be able to see that and don't get discouraged with that. But he's gifted you with a special ability to see. Pray. Hallelujah. Robert, 
I always push you into prayer when we pray outside the walls. I always say, all right, Robert, you pray. What? Really? But I'm, I'm doing that because I see something in you. I see that you are a prophetic type of person. Both of you are. But you see more in, in different ways than what he sees. But this year, I want you to open your mouth and begin to declare what God has put into your heart. Just declare it. Not at work. Not at work. Unless you're in the restroom with somebody by yourself. And, but, but proclaim. Declare. Don't hold back on your words. Don't hold back. Because our words can set people free. Our words can set people free. Find a broken person and begin to declare the presence of the Lord over them. Find a, a person in bondage and begin to release them, says the Lord. This is a year of the Lord's favor. This verse, this verse is going to be the, the verse for 2023 in Luke 4. But receive it for yourself. Receive it for yourself. Don't watch someone else get it. We're not spectators. We take what, what we believe God has given to us. We take. It's so good to see some of you. Alec, it's so good to see you. Alec was was our youth leader a long time ago. We were just a baby back then. You guys, wow. It's really neat to see. We've got Jason and what's your name? Marisol and her family. They used to be a part of our church here. Only, uh, who are these tall people with you? Hitchhikers. I need to let you go. But listen, what an incredible time we're going to have this next year. Amen? What an incredible time we're going to have next year. I know I am. It's going to be good. Would you raise your hands to the Lord for a moment and just worship Him? This is not something that I'm telling you to do. You just worship the Lord. You just worship the Lord. Just say, Lord, I receive what you've given to me today. Not my imagination. It's your word implanted into my spirit. And so, Lord, we know that your word will produce fruit. As the rain waters the plants, causes the plants to grow, Lord, water the word in our own lives, Father. Water the faith in our own lives, Father. Water us, Lord, in Jesus' name. sings the last song. If you would like to come forward and just thank the Lord. What a great day. Just to thank the Lord for His unspeakable gift. In Jesus. Amen. You can do so. Mary, I'm, I'm, I'm totally blown away by you. You are a woman of faith. Your what I see when I see you, this is Mary Sanchez, what I see is like an eagle. Have you ever seen an eagle's face? They'll be looking this way and then... That's you in the spirit. No matter what Satan throws at you,
you say amen? Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody. Can we just give God a clap offering for the word of God today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And as we sing this song, we want to declare the goodness of God over your life. Amen. How many of us want the goodness of God in our lives? Amen. Hallelujah. I love you. fails me all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my hands I will see of the goodness of God the altar is open don't be afraid I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay.
somebody give God some praise. Oh, somebody ought to give him a Christmas praise today. Hallelujah! Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas.